Hafiz TV, unique every day. Muhammad. Sheikh Muhammad Awal, founder and director of Azaytun Dawa Institute. Let's welcome him together. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأصلي وأسلم على المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما I'm Mr. Chairman Dr. Professor Marzouk Sheikh Nasser Professor Dr. Chief Andani, the chairman himself, and the chief. I think all protocols should be observed, right? Because I can't remember all these things. I greet you with the University of Islam, and that is Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I'm so elated. Definitely, I'm so humbled in front of you. And me standing in front of you, it is a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He just made it so. And so uh, all glory belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who nourish and make things happen. And that is why I'm here in front of you, not because of anything but to spearhead Islam. As you can see from the topic given to me, propelling Islam to the next level, shouldering the responsibility, the role of the Muslim in nation building, whatever that is, then the role of the Muslim Ummah. You see, my brother, Dr. Professor Chief Andani made a statement. And he said, against all odds, knowledge is the key. Knowledge is the key. And that makes me to think about the first revelation that came to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How many words does Allah know? How many words? How many words does, do I know, do you know? But why would Allah say, read books, knowledge, crave it, and not analyze it, knowledge. So in the first revelation, Surah Al-Alaqa, Allah mentioned knowledge twice. And he mentioned pen once to emphasize the importance of learning in Islam. Think deep about that. Knowledge, without knowledge, nothing is gonna to happen today. A lot of things is not gonna function the way we want it to be. So knowledge is the key. It is the key that unlocks the mysteries of life. You have knowledge, you have everything. Just like he mentioned again, Chief and Danny. Forget about the Sakawa, this and that, and this and that, hoping to make money right away in a quick move. Get the knowledge. Women will come to you, willingly or unwillingly. <laughs> Leaders will seek you. People will gravitate towards you. Knowledge is power. That is why Allah said to Yahya, Ya Yahya, Huzul kitab be what? Uwa. Oh, Yahya, hold on to the book with might. Don't let it go. Book. So the messenger said, Hayrukum manta allama al Quran wa allama. The best amongst you is he who learned the Quran and teaches it. The best in the sight of Allah. The best. <laughs> the best. And he also says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, knowledge is the lost property of the believer. Go look for it, even if it's with the unbeliever, because you deserve it more than the unbeliever. Sayyidina Ali Karma Allah you know what he said to his student? He said, should I show you those who will inherit the Jannah? They said, yes. He said, behold, the knowledgeable people, the men of knowledge, those who seek knowledge. Because if you have knowledge, your thinking 
will be corrected. Your action, everything about you will be corrected. And so therefore, you hear about the Sahaba, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Bilal ibn Rabah, you know, Sayyid Qudri, this and that. And you think of them as some huge mullahs with turban. No, they were youth. 15 years old they were, 20 years old. But look at their name. You think of them as some big shuyuks. No, 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 no. They were youth. The messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw something in them and he built Islam on their shoulder. <laughs> built Islam on their shoulder. And he said, go. Allah said, siru fil ard. Travel on earth. These words make them to traverse all over the world. With all due respect, Sheikh Nasser, as I was looking, I was doing some research, wallahi, on the early Muslims that came to the shores of America. In Albuquerque, New Mexico, a state, a book was brought out by Peter Jones. He said this book must be shown to the world because it has been so long they're trying to hide it. They wish, who? The Orientalists, they wish they can expunge the contribution of the early Muslims to the world. They wish they could rub it off, but it can. It has gone down to the annals of history. In Albuquerque, New Mexico, when Christopher Columbus came, bullying them and killing the Arawak Indians, stealing from them. At the end of the day, he began to shoot them so he could take the land. So they told him, why are you doing this to us? We gave you the land, we gave you everything. We show you how to put the ropes in this terrain. Why at the end of the day, you giving us a hard time? But you know what? Those guys who came before you, the tall guys with white clothes and they play with water a lot. They didn't kill us. So he went, oh my God, these guys were here. The Muslims were there from the very beginning. Intellectuals are still writing the books, hoping that all the facts will be brought out by the Western information technology, what the Muslims did on the face of the earth. The beauty of the youth, because they have exuberance, they have the power, they have the blood running in them. They are the ones that will run with the worst to the world. So the messenger took time and nurtured them. Just like Professor Barzouk just mentioned, he nurtured them. Nurture, he mold them and shape them. That is why you and I are Muslims. Otherwise our forefathers would be walking in the bushes of Africa with hangover, drinking wine. We hang over, but no, the Sahaba did the job through the intervention of the messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They travel all over the world. Among them is a man, you know about Tanzania, uh, Zimbabwe, uh, Mozambique? Mozambique is in East Africa, right, Sheikh? In East Africa, right? In East Africa, Mozambique. I mean, South Africa. It's East South, kind of in the middle, sort of, yeah. So, you know, where you have Tanzania, you know, all these little Muslim names in their language, you will find, you know, Swahili with a lot of Arabic, just like the house language. In Timbuktu, they found out that this man, who is a Tabi or not Tabi, because of one word, according to the script, Wama Arsanaka illa rahmatan lil alami. We send thee not, O Muhammad, except as a mercy. The whole of mankind. Wa ma arsanaka illa kafatan linnas bashiran wa naziran. Then Allah says something that is very powerful. Wa lakinna aksaran nasi la ya'lamun. We have not sent thee, but as a guide and a warner for the whole of mankind. Then Allah said, but most of mankind do not know. This according to the history we read from the script from Timbuktu, that this man by the name Musa ibn Ubaik. He left the Arabian shores and he came, he crossed the river. The torrential rain, at the time that he crossed, the rain was like, you know, the rain is so ferocious, but he, he you know, he ventured it and he crossed just to deliver the message. So the white people could not say Musa ibn Ubaik, they say Mozambique. Check it out. 
Gone are the days that you just make a statement and run. No, people could check it out on the internet right now. Check it. Musa ibn Ibaik. What is the etymology? How did that name came Mozambique? They will give you all the history. So what the white men did is this. I'm getting back to it. See, I, I used to live in Seattle, Washington, but I moved to, that's where my center is. But New York is so big that they still need a lot of things to be said. So I move again back to New York with my brother Carlos here. So what happened was that I was in my living room, just relaxing, taking it easy, minding my own business. Then they showed this Caucasian, a white guy with a blue eye and blonde hair. And among his titles, they say he's a specialist on the Fulani trap. I said, Kai! They say he is a specialist among his titles that he specialized on the Fulani tribes. I say, what? You've never been to my village? You don't speak no Fulani, which by the way, I'll see if I can speak a little one. <laughs> you know, you don't speak my language. Never been to my village, yet you are a specialist on my tribe. There is a problem. Something is wrong somewhere. Allah said, Ikra, we say, La Ikra. Ikra, La Ikra. Read, mm -mm. no, we will read. That's the result. They're writing books about you. That is why they call it history, his story about you. His, where is our story? Where is our story? Who wrote the books? They wrote the books. They said things that is not true. They mixed it up about you. I want, it. I want my story. When they write it up, where do they put it? In the library. Listen, they lie upon you and they bury it. It become a library. <laughs> so when you go to the library, guess how wrong? <laughs> guess how wrong it's going to take you to decipher, to, to dig deep in and get information. They put it under the rock. So it's about time that we rise up to the challenge where the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam put us on that, you know, pinnacle. So knowledge is a must, whether you like it or not. Allah said, Ikra. The Messenger said, go and read, even into China. If that is a hadith, whether it's a hadith or not. But whoever made those statements is in tune with reason and logic. Back in the days, the golden age of Islam, the golden age of Islam, who were those who brought Islam to the surface of the world? They were the youths, the Sahaba. They were youths. They were not like 80, 40, 70. No, they were less than 25 years old. Most of them, most of the Sahaba, check it out, less than 25. But they handled it and they move around with it. They went to the universe of Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They learned all these things and they shared it to the world. So the role of the Muslim today is to educate yourself. After all, Allah said, Hayrukum. No, Allah said, Kuntu Hayru Ummat Uhur Jalin Nas. Ta'amruna bil ma'aruf wa tanhawna adan munka. You are the best of nation. Evolve to guide mankind. You Muslims. Hayru Ummah Uhur Jalin Nas. You are the best that Allah has evolved for the guidance of mankind. Ta'amruna bil ma'aruf. Enjoying good and forbidding what is not good. Rancor, bad stuff. But the question is, why would Allah choose you? Why would Allah say, you are the best of nation? Most of the shuyuks, the imams, wallahi, they read, we are the best of people chosen for mankind, full stop. I say, no, man, you got to go a little further. Why would Allah choose you to be the best of mankind? Just because you are handsome like me? I mean, you know. Everybody knows that. <laughs> it is not a hidden something. I mean, <laughs> all right, so why would Allah choose you? The Yahud were chosen in time. Do you know that? They were chosen in time to be the vehicle of righteousness. But they failed, and they failed so miserably. And the Nasara were also given the opportunity. Allah gave them the Injil, the Evangel, the Gospel, the Good News, they also deviated entirely from the parts. Then Allah in his wisdom, he said, now you are the best of nation, evolve for mankind. But you can't be the best of nation if you don't have knowledge. 
You could tell me if you are the best of nations only if you fulfill that criteria. You teach the world. So the elders today in our community, they should make it easy for the youth to come very close to them so they could impart their wisdom and knowledge to them. The youth need the older people, the experienced one, so that you intermarry together, you know, you pass on your understanding together. The youth, we shouldn't be leaving them out. We should make, create an avenue that will bring them very close to us. In this way, they will listen to us, we will listen to them, and eventually they would understand exactly what is it. What is it that it takes to make them be the next generation that will make Islam look good? And you know the golden age of Islam. Back in the days, there is, a, there is, there is an institution in Iraq called Darul Hikmah. Darul Hikmah. Wallahi. Darul Hikmah, it is the only institution that wisdom and logic and thinking is being done in that system. So the Western world was in total darkness. That was the golden age of Islam. When the Quran, the Nubuwa came, it became the light age. But before the Nubuwa, it was the dark ages. At that time, the Europeans were living in caves. They don't take no shower. The Muslims were bubbling with information. And the language of the world, used, the lingua franca of the world, used to be Arabic language. Wallahi, he studied the golden age. People have to learn the Arabic language. We gave the world. But the West is not going to mention that they, the Muslim did this, the Muslim did that. It is as a result of us not reading anymore. We put the books under the shelf. We don't want to read again. And that is why the chief mentioned again in the first speaker, Professor uh, Abdul Rahman, that they are trampling on us. They are walking on us. Anything that is negative, they mention, they point to the Muslim. Anything negative, to the Muslim. When indeed we are the ones that are driving everything, we were moving and shaking the world at that time. You know, the Western world, absolutely zero. We did so many things. So the youth have to rise up to the challenge of technology. The chief mentioned that. Technology. You know, challenging courses. Technology is here to stay. All they have to do, they're going to build upon it. Bill Gates wrote a book. The name of the book is Business at the Speed of Thoughts. I don't know how he think about this. Business at the Speed of Thought. The second abrasion of that book. He said, technology is here to stay. They're only going to build upon it. It is here to stay, this technology. But we're going to keep building upon it. It's not going to be like, okay, let's take away technology completely and make a new room for something else. No, technology is here. So our youth have to be given that opportunity, even if we have to set up some sort of foundation to educate them. Gone are the days when our leaders have been giving some money or worldly affairs to shut them up. But no, the youth are saying no to all this kind of thing. They want education. They want to go and study technology, ICT, you know, philosophy, banking, management, governance, politics. Enter into politics, man. That's when you will change. You could make the change. Uh, politics is haram. Who told you it's haram? The whole Quran is politics. All the Quran. Allah said, don't do this. If you do this, I'll give you that. If you do this, I will like you. If you don't, it's not politics. Politics, they come and tell us, you vote for me, I'll give you this. You vote for me, I'll give you Allah said, look, in the Allah, Allah, you boo. Allah does not like this. Allah like this. Allah don't. Is it not? This is politics. It's a human behavior. All the Quran is about human behavior. So why? One person, if you think politics is not good, one person could enter into the realm of politics and will be able to affect change. And that will make his peers and friends begin to see the new trend. And they might also change. So don't sit on the sideline and keep saying, discouraging. A lot of people come to me. Oh, Sheikh, they told us that if we do politics, we'll enter heaven, be, uh, hell, because it's haram. Wallahi, they tell me this. They tell me a lot. So sometimes I cry. I say, okay, look. I have to explain things. I have to quote Quranic ayah to buttress my, you know, uh, 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 whatever I'm going to tell them. So this is the situation. 
Uh, the Muslims have to rise up to the college of doing a lot of things. We can do so many things. The golden age of Islam have shown that we could do it. Why should we take the back seat? We need to go back and take the front seat. That's where we belong. If we don't do it, who's going to do it? They don't care about you. They don't care about us. They don't care about the community. All what they do is give you a little crumbs. That's all they do. So the Quran, the ayah that the Sheikh just quoted, in Allah, Allah, you get become hatta you get be unforeseen. Allah does not change a community unless they seek to change themselves. Then Allah will step in because Allah is not an an oligarchic kind of government. See. You want to change? He see that change. Then he make it for you. Look at the hammer, the drinking time. At the time of Rasul, the revelation is coming. But they were drinking. Allah didn't stop them. It's psychology. And the Rasul was there. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. They were behind him. And they were like this and like that. They were going, weaving all around. Allah is watching. The messenger saw it. No ayah came and stopped them. Sometimes they pray and then they hit the messenger in the back. Then they, they go back again. So Allah said, look at the wisdom. Allah said, oh, you who believe. If you come to pray, make sure that you are not, you know, your mind is clear. Or, and you know what you're saying. Because they were reading the Quran. Allah didn't say, look, stop. That's haram. No, 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 no. He allowed them internal change to rise up within them. And so they themselves, they realize, you know what? Man, this is a lot. I don't think we have a lot of respect, man. The messenger is here and we're doing all these things. So they begin to stop. Mm, Allah said, okay. Now they are changing. Then Allah sent down the final ayah. Inna mal khamur wal maisar wal ansabu wal azlamu rishtu min amal shaitan fajita nibukhu la allahum tiflihum. That means they seek to change. Allah allowed them to change. So when Allah realized in their heart that they are looking for change, then he sent them the full guidance. That very day, most of scholars say, the sheikh is here, he could, you know, testify to that. Most scholars are saying that wine was boggled on the street of Medina, never to be filled again. It is as if there was some kind of a rain going on in the street of Medina. People are running, subhanallah, there is an ayah, no more drinking, no more, subhanallah. They quit up to today in Medina. No way. You can't drink. This is 1,444 years verse. Which miracle are you talking about? Which miracle? Without any miracle, Islam transformed nations. Which miracle? This is the miracle. Look at us. This is the miracle. So I think we have to rise up to the challenge of education. Education is the key that unlocks the mysteries of life. And today, I'm going to give you some of the... Just so you would know that most of the things that you learn in school didn't come from the Western, you know, hemisphere. For example, algebra. You heard about algebra, and you think it's a Western word. No, it's Arabic. Algebra. Something that you put in your hand, like... Algebra. X, Y. If X is not Y, what is Z? Algebra, algebra. That's where it came from. They stole it from you. Algorithm is an Arabic word. They also stole that from you. In the United States, you hear about Sharif. Don't you watch the movie? You see the Sharif with a badge walking like this with a gun over here? Sharif. That means he's untouchable. He's of high standard. A Sharif. It came from Arabic. Sharif is not an English word. Sharif is us. Somebody who is of nobility. That is where it came from. Have you heard about Admiral Navy, the leader of the Navy squad, Al Admiral? The Arabs were using the boat to traverse when the Europeans were living in Cape. They don't even take no shower. Muslims were doing one day. So the leader of the boat system is Al Admiral. Why is it that now they use it in the Navy? It's ours. It's ours. We started all this thing. You hear about, you know, something like uh, graduation. Wallahi, Chairman, I went to Egypt about two, three years ago. Wallahi, we went to the university, Al Azhar. The student, the African student, invite me. 
So I came there, you know, stopped over for like four or five hours. We went to the first institution. It was named after the daughter of the messenger Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Fatima al-Zahra. That's where you go, al-Azhar. Zahara, al-Azhar. So we went to the first building, the building that, like, you know, the original building. And then they show us the first graduation gap. Wallahi, graduation gap. Don't you see when you graduate, you little students, you know, university? What do you put? Big riga, babariga. And you put on a little something that looks like hulane, bahulabane. You don't even know. The origin started out in Al Azhar. I've seen the gap. But now they want to remove that Islamic thing around it. They make it like a big one and then they put a little something. That's a lie. We started at all this thing. It is us. It is us. That's why I said they wish they can expunge the contribution made by the Muslims to the world. But they can. They just can. You hear about a safari. Safari. Safara. Safari. It's us. It came from us, right? <laughs> they think it's from them. It is not from them. It's from them. Even guitar. Dun, 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 dun. You know, guitar. It's us, al -Jita. We use that when they were living in caves. Monsoon, the time, the change of time, the tidal wave, the change of season. Monsoon, you heard about that. It is from us. It is Arabic word. Eventually, it crept into the main text of English. Almanac, almanac, the calendar, almanac. It's al Any word you see in English from today is a challenge. That stands with al, al, al. Check it out. It's Arabic word. It's Arabic word. At that time, the Europeans, I didn't say that. The writers of the Western world, they say the Europeans were living in caves when the Muslims were doing wonders. They were doing something that is beyond our, why is it that we have taken, why are we taking the back seat when in fact we could always go back and take the seat? The only way we could get back to take the first seat is to hold on to the rope of Allah. Hold on to the rope that Allah has sent down to us. The Quran and the way of life of the messenger Muhammad. Once you hold on to that, the division, whatever you want to believe, fine. But at least, let's come, because the thing that put us together is more better than the one that divided us. The Quran and the way of life of the messenger Muhammad. The messenger said that. If you hold these two things together, Nothing. You will be like angels walking the earth. And the Western people, they realize that this is a fact. I just came back from Wa. Chief, <laughs> I was in Wa. I went to Wana. When I went to Wana, we had a talk. And he asked me, when are you going back? Muhammad Awal, my son. I say, I'll be, I'll be going back. You know, I'll be spending five days. He said, okay. You came, I was told you came by air. If you are going back, I'm going to make sure that you, you pilot the air, the, 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 the aircraft. You are going to pilot it. So I laughed with all humility. I said, how am I going to do that? He said, I've made my arrangement. True to that, when I went to the airport, the captain is my friend. Nasser. Sinari. He came. He said, Sheikh. Today, you will pilot. I say, me pilot this? Impossible. He said, Umurini came from Wana. I said, okay. So we went in and they put me in the cockpit. We got the first captain is here, which is Captain Sinari, and then the other captain, and I'm sitting right there in the middle. And I was watching. Immediately, what came to mind? One Quranic surah. Wallahi. Because I'm taking opportunity for each and every situation that I find myself. Allah made a statement. Look, the speed that we took, I know you, you know, take on an airline, the speed, this and that, but when you are in the cockpit, it's a different story. I was like, man, should I shake in my pants or what? The speed is mind-boggling. So Allah says something about this mechanism, this science that we are seeing, that I'm seeing in the cockpit. Allah mentioned every, anything in the cockpit, everything about aeroplane. 
to Solomon with giving the power of the wind. Rehan. As if it's in Tajuri. Traveling. Asafa. Traveling. Speeding. And that is one of the, you know, uh, components of uh, aerodynamics. Speed. Very important. Air or wind. Very important. Asifat and Tajiri. Bi Amurihi. The Amr is in the hands of Suleiman. What is that? The cockpit. The Al Amarun. In Ahanusa. The Amr. We've given him the power of the wing. We've given him the speed. And we give him the Amr. That means he's in control to pull the Il al Ard al Lati Barakana. Fiha. To a land which we bless. Which land? So you move from one land to another land. If this is not the component of aeroplane, what is that? So when we land at Kotoka, I say, Captain Nasser, you know, you've stimulated my mind, and I'm thinking about the Quranic verses, and this is what came to mind. I explained to him in details more than now. And he was shocked for the first time. I said, you've been flying all this plane, and you never know this ayah. He said, Sheikh, I think I, it's, it's as if I've just heard it first. Allah said in the Quran, وَلَكَ الصَّرَفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلٍ وَكَانَ لِإِنسَانَ أَكْسَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَلَ We have indeed explained in this Quran every similitude. وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَسَّنَّاهُ تَفْسِيلًا To each and everything in the Quran, Allah said, فَسَّنَّاهُ We have explained, not even explained, tafsila in details. Then he said, أَفَلَا تَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ إِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ don't you look at the Quran, not just looking, deeper looking, or your mind is blocked off. This is what Allah wants you to delve deep into the Quran. That is why the Muslims did wonders at the time that they did. Where were the Europeans? Where were they? History bear record to the fact that the Muslim did so many wonderful things. Mr. Chairman, you know, I used to live in Seattle, Washington. Seattle, Washington is the only state in America that we receive two weeks weather forecast. Sometimes three weeks. Check Nasser knew that. He's been there several times. Three weeks. No state in America received three weeks weather forecast. Here in Ghana, I was lying down after the fact. It's raining in Cape Coast. I said, what do you mean it's raining in Cape Coast? You should have told me it's going to rain in Cape Coast. That's what we do. But alhamdulillah, we're doing the best that we can. But the point is, they give us three days, I mean three weeks, just so you prepare your life. This and that, it's going to rain. Uh, on Wednesday, it's going to rain. But it's going to start in the morning, like 8 o'clock. Then it's going to cut off like 12. Then the clouds go, come over lie. That's what, that, that's what happened. How do they know? Are they doing I mean, the magic? What, what do they do? How do? Why is it? It's to the point. Science. They send balloons to the atmosphere to take pictures of the rarefied materials. They know this wind is moving to the west, to the east. It's going so they calculate and they know the more certain wind moves is just a calculation. Steady. And then they begin to know. But Allah in his wisdom as I was reading in Seattle, the more I collected all the information that is consistent with the rain, 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 I stumble on one particular verse. So to rat. Allah says something. Look at what Allah says. Alam tara anna Allah yuzji sahaban. Do they not see how we move the clouds gently? Then we join them together. Alam tara anna Allah yuzji sahaban. Thumma yuallifu baynahu. This word given in the Arabian desert without any mechanism of computerization in the desert far from civilization far from computerization in the desert of Medina do they not see how we move the clouds gently then we join them together when it acquired that mountain head look rain begins to fall out of it now, science is telling me and you, the science of meteorologists, the meteorologists, they say, wallahi, they say before rainfall, it followed three principles. Number one, movement of the clouds. They call that clouds cumulus clouds. 
cumulus clouds move independently by themselves. Don't you see before it rains? Look at the sky. You see clouds moving independently. That's what they say. They call it cumulus cloud. When it converges, it becomes cumulimnibus. I don't know where they get that term, cumulimnibus. But that's what they say. Check. I don't know. <laughs> but that's what they say, cumulimnibus. Then Allah said, fataral watka. When it becomes so dense, that is the darkness you see, like a mountain. Allah said, it becomes like a mountain. In it, there is no board here. I would have given you the calculation. What happened? What happened? What is the spike? What causes the rain? Actually, we did that in Wazoo, Washington State University. They challenged me to that, and subhanAllah, from the Quranic test, we were able to deduce how they fall. What lies before we learned there? 11 people took Shahada. This is the record. This is not just this is in the record. Check on YouTube. How many students accepted from Wazoo, Washington State University, on the basis of one Quranic science? One! One, not just many, one. Because they were like, how could, how, how in the desert? When we knew all this in less than 75 years old, how could they do it? So I'm asking, what? Yahan is really that. When it comes to, you see the rain coming, four thousand. So the movement of the clouds, gathering of the clouds, then the updraft, and then the rain between four. That is exactly what science tells us. I don't know who told the messenger Muhammad <laughs> your guess is as good as my guess. So the students need to go deep into science. One of my nephew, last year when I came, chief, and he came, I said, hey, Yusuf, what did you, mashallah, you finished? He said, yeah. He said, well, Nagama, I finished my uh, postgrad. I said, what did you study? He said, he studied fancy language. I said, inna lillahi wa inna ilahi. <laughs> He said, he's happy. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I have my degree on in, in fancy language. I said, subhanAllah. To Enzu, the moment you leave Mankasim or Kasuangarba, she can nang kind of fancy. <laughs> Sheikh Abad is looking at me with all due respect. <laughs> ah, why are you doing you, you, you graduate with fancy Sheikh Yusuf? Come on, man. So we, I, I have to inject him with a new spirit of Seeking more knowledge, now he did other stuff. He did uh, information technology. Say, mashallah, now you can go further. So you do challenging, challenging subject that will make it easy for you, and you become whoever you want to be on earth today. As a Muslim, wallahi, we don't know anything except knowledge. So this is your challenge, the Muslim, the role of the Muslim youth, your youth. You are the youth. If you educate yourself, you educate the whole world. And if they, they educate the woman, what do they say? You educate the whole nation. And that is true. Because if the women get education, the youth, the children will get education. That means you are educating nations all across the board. So I think it's about time that we give, you know, the, uh, uh, our, our, our women folk the latitude to delve deep into research. The men have done a terrible life. Terrible thing. With all due respect, men, we did terrible it's about time that we give the women the chance to let us see what they can do. And I believe they will do a lot. The messenger said, seeking knowledge is incumbent on the men and the women from the day you were born until the day that you enter in your grave. Some malam say, look, even before you enter the grave, maybe you have swooned, maybe you have fainted until they put you in the, you know, the hole and they put, you know, mud on it. Otherwise, you might revive again and come back. That tells you the power of knowledge. Definitely, my time is up. I'm not going to keep speaking, but I have one more word I'm going to give you. With all due respect, just, it take, just take one, less than one minute. Uh, before, you know, like a few years ago, in Washington State, there is a lot of tall, you know, um, woods. It's like a, there's a lot of wood lawns. It's a lot of woods. So Washington State, uh, not Washington, D.C., between Washington State and Washington, D.C., when you take a flight, it's about almost seven hours. So don't think Washington, D.C. is the same as Washington State. It's just two different places. You know, it's just two different altogether. So when I was in Washington State, what happened was that uh, the, the UFO, that is, uh, the scientists are thinking that they are getting very close to certain creation of God Almighty that they think they will hold on to them. There is some creation. They know there is something. There are some creation. There are something outside us human beings. They think 
So they call that UFO, unknown foreign object. Yeah. Among other things, why they send the rover machine to Mars is to detect along the way if they could get glimpses of these, you know, creations of Allah. And then they have something called anyway, the Bigfoot. You heard about that? The Bigfoot are supposed to be some maybe 12 or 15 foot of, uh, of, of, of some kind of a gorilla that resembles human beings. They think there is something. They are seeing things, but they haven't put their hands on the liver yet. Their sensor, their mechanism is telling them that they are something that is there be, be, uh, beyond us human beings. So they made, you know, uh, a special uh, uh, convention in Seattle, Washington, uh, to actually ask the government to give them more uh, mechanism to be able to delve deep into making those kind of research to get that UFO, to get their hands on it. So it became a question of whether there are other human beings like us, or maybe they are creation, but not exactly like us, but they too. Uh, so the case, is, the case in point is that, personally, I believe, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about my personal belief. I believe 100% that there are other creation that we haven't seen yet. Because according to the astronomers, we have over 5,000 billions of billions of other stars. Our Earth is just a speck, maybe the smallest of other billions and billions and trillion stars. So how do you know if people live in them or not? You don't have proof. But there is, the proof came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Praise be to Allah, Lord of the world. Alameen, not alam, alameen. Then look at this word in the Quran. Whatever in the heaven and earth and in between them, they do glorify Allah. But you mankind cannot understand how they glorify Allah. Whatever in the heaven and earth and in between, they glorify Allah. You can't understand how these beings glorify Allah. Then finally, the very first word, verse that stamp my belief in the other beings that I don't even seen yet, but I believe they exist, is this. Wamin ayatihi, Allah said, and among his signs, as samawat, wal ard, wa ma basa fihi ma min dabatin, wa huwa ala jam'ihin iza haisha wa qadir, Allahu Akbar. And among the signs of Allah is the creation of the heaven and the earth, and other creation that he put in between them, subhanallah. Then Allah said, I am I have the power to bring them if I will at the time that I want them to be. So clearly, my understanding. So as I'm speaking right now, I am doing a research on UFO. Definitely, the three verses could not solve the problem, but so far I am convinced that they are other human beings. Allah said He could bring us and them all together if He will, and when the time is up. Definitely, I'm going to stop here. Hazar billahi tawfiq. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Hafiz TV. Unique. Every day.